In the very complex uh, uh, maritime history of the Dor Peninsula, uh, I think I could make a very compelling argument that the creation of the Ship Canal is the most important tick on that timeline. This was the wild, wild west out here uh, in the, you know, the 1840s and 1850s. The Erie Canal had been completed in, in 1825 and now there's a tremendous western migration and this place is just blooming out here. But it's still, it's still pioneer country. Uh, and the big dog when it comes to ports regionally was Green Bay. And so that's where lumber was being shipped and that's where other goods were being shipped from the east to go west and they would either go through the Rock Island Pass or the Port de More Passage, Death's Door. There was big economic incentive, if you will, to cut through this peninsula and dramatically shorten the trip as well as make it much safer. The pioneer here that really kind of made this happen was Joseph Harris. He goes, hey, if we can cut through that little narrow part of the isthmus and improve the channel down the rest of the bay, Sturgeon Bay was a natural bay, through the rest of the bay we can cut off all of this time. And he starts trying to raise interest in this. The fortitude that it took for Joseph Harris to actually make this thing happen from the time he starts in the 1860s to where he finally gets it sort of off the ground in the 1870s uh, is phenomenal. And he had an, another 10 years before that where it was just an idea. Right? So he's you know, 20 years into this thing and he's still, uh, you know, still struggling. A couple of key things that are kind of interesting in history that happened. Uh, one, uh, the Peshtigo Fire. Uh, and the Peshtigo Fire burned part of the forests uh, that were in this 200,000 acres that he had secured. And the government basically settled like almost an insurance claim, if you will, kind of like uh, disaster relief today. And they pay off uh, the investors. So he has that money. So now he's got seed money. He gets rolling on the construction. And in 1874, uh, a big recession happens. <laughs> and, uh, and so the money kind of dries up and uh, there's no investors and he has a, you know, a dead period where nothing's happened. And you can imagine the discontent here in Sturgeon Bay. Lots of rumblings and grumblings. Hey, what a crazy idea that canal thing was. The completion of the canal, as I said, it turned Sturgeon Bay into both a bay and a lake port. It became like one of the main navigational passages. Uh, I mean, the first year of operation, I think they had less than 500 ships. That's still a lot of ships, right? Within the next few years, then they're up where there's 3,000 transits through the canal. So this is huge. It also started to just absolutely boom uh, the stone industry, the lumber industry. It also made it a very lucrative uh, and compatible place for shipbuilding, right? You've got all of this uh, high quality lumber, this immigrant population uh, that has now arrived in the area who all come from maritime uh, backgrounds. And so you have you know, folks that can build ships. It turns Sturgeon Bay into the, the shipbuilding capital that it, would, that it would eventually become. 